Okay. Hi, I'm Sana, and I'll be showing you how to operate the one meter telescope at the LNI Carswell Observatory. The technicians that are assigned to help you with observing will take care of anything that requires to be here in person. They'll turn on the telescope and the camera and they'll also rotate the dome. So once all that is done, you'll need to set up the telescope and drive it around. The first step in doing that is to open the sh plane wave shutter control that's in the bottom of the taskbar here. When you open that with the telescope on, you'll just be able to hit connect. It will automatically be set to COM3, but if it's not, you can just click on it and make sure that COM3 is the port selected. Once that happens, it'll show you here the status of each of the four pedals on the telescope. The technician will have checked to make sure that there is nothing around them so that you can just safely hit the open button. And you can see here, it'll tell you that one and three open first. And if you give it a second, it'll tell you that they're fully open. And then two and four will open. So now that you have all four green petals, you know that the telescope is fully open and you're able to start observing. So you can just minimize that. And the next thing you wanna do is open the plane wave interface, which is right here or also on the desktop up at the top. And this is where you'll be doing most of the telescope control for the night. So in the mount tab right here, this is where you can connect to the telescope. So you just hit the connect button there. This will come up and you can just clear the notifications and then close it. So the first thing that you want to do is hit enable as and enable alt. And now you'll be free to drive the telescope anywhere you want. If those motors are disabled, so those are the azimuth and the altitude motors for the telescope, you won't be able to drive it anywhere. So that's the first thing that you need to do when you connect to the telescope. Now, when you wanna drive it somewhere, basically you can, there's three ways that you can drive the telescope. First of all is by using the sky viewer here. So if you just click into the sky viewer tab, this will come up. It has a bit of a, it shows you some constellations, some stars, and even some Messier and NGC objects in there. So if your object shows up in there, you can simply click on whatever object you want to observe. So in this case, just randomly clicking on the ghost of Jupiter. Once you click on that, you'll see that there's this little yellow circle that's there, and that indicates the position that the telescope is set to drive to and then you can just click go to, and the telescope will drive over. Then you can notice also that there was that little green circle that was over here initially, and then it moved over to the ghost of Jupiter. What that does is it tells you where the telescope is pointing. So wherever you point the telescope on the sky viewer, that green point is going to follow it, and you can tell where the telescope is pointing without even looking and seeing the telescope. So this doesn't show everything that's in the sky and likely the objects you'll be observing won't be in here or if they are, they'll be probably a little bit difficult to find. So there's two other ways that you can drive the telescope. Both of those can be accessed through the view tab. Click on view, then go to find targets. And then there's two ways that you can drive the things in here. If you have an NGC object or something with uh, a designation, you can just search it up in here. So for example, if you want to search up the Crab Nebula, you could type the name in and it would come up. Or you could just type in the Messier number, so Messier 1 for the Crab Nebula, and it will hypothetically come up in here. Yep. So you can search any NGC number or Messier number in there. Alternatively, if your object doesn't have a designation, you can enter the right ascension and declination in the bottom here. So you can just, for right ascension, you'll just enter in the hour separated by a colon, then minutes and then seconds, and similar for declination. Like it says down here, make sure that these are the J2000 coordinates, so not the on-date coordinates. Otherwise, it won't point to exactly where you want to go. And just in there, you just click go to RA deck. So we can just search something up just to show you how it works. M106, you can see that on the sky viewer. You can search that up in here.
click on it, you see the yellow circle is hovering over M106, and then you can click go to RA deck, and the green circle, which is the telescope, drives over to M106, which is your target. The important thing to remember about this is to make sure to double check with your technician that there is nothing on the platform, there's nothing obstructing the telescope's path in the way. The telescope has very powerful motors and it will not stop if it hits something or someone. So it's very important to make sure that the dome is completely clear and there's nothing in its way. So just double check with your technician before moving the telescope so they can make sure. When it comes to the tracking, there's a couple important things to look at here. First is this axis zero RMS and axis one RMS. These correspond to the azimuth and altitude of the, of the telescope. And it just tells you the error. So RMS is just the, the uh, root mean error. And ideally these numbers will be below 0.25. And right now they're green, so that means that the tracking is very good. The object should be exactly where it is, but sometimes those boxes will be yellow or red and you'll have very high numbers. And that indicates that the tracking is off or you've gone to an object that is too low and the telescope can't point to it. So for example, if I, if I try to go to M107, click on that and hit go to, the telescope will try to drive to it, but it won't be able to reach it because it's too low. So if you just give these a second to stabilize, you'll see that axis zero works because one of the coordinates is right, but then the altitude is not right at all and it's red and it's not working. So you'll have to go to a different object or you'll just have to wait for it to rise to the correct altitude. The last couple things that you need to, to deal with here is, first of all, the M3 tab. There's several different tabs up here that correspond to different things that we'll talk about in different videos. But M3 just corresponds to the third mirror or the tertiary mirror in the telescope that reflects light into one of the eyepieces. Port 1 indicates the CCD, which you will be using to observe. So make sure that port 1 is active. So it'll look just like this, it'll, port one will be green, um, and that's where it should be when you come in. If by chance it's on the other port, when you try and take a picture, you're not gonna see anything because the telescope is reflecting light into the other port. So in that case, you would just click on port one and the telescope would rotate over to port one. And then you're ready to observe. Finally, the last thing that you need to deal with here is the rotate tab. So the, because of the structure of the telescope, it's an alt as mount, what happens over the course of the night is the field that you're looking at will rotate. And while the telescope has very good tracking and will be able to follow the object through the sky, the one thing that you need to do is enable this derotator so that not only will the telescope follow it, but it will also rotate the field over the night and it tracks the object perfectly then. So you just hit enable and the rotator will be enabled and the camera will rotate literally with the field over the course of the night to track the objects. Right, so that's all for setup. And there are other videos on the CCD operations for the telescope.